Shoulder up your gun and whistle up your dogs. Shoulder up your gun and whistle up your dogs. We're going out to catch a groundhog. Oh, groundhog. Run him in a hole and couldn't get him out. Run him in a hole and couldn't get him out. Gosh almighty, what a groundhog snout. Oh, groundhog. Here comes Sally with a ten-foot pole. Here comes Sally with a ten-foot pole. Twist that whistle pig out of his hole. Oh, groundhog. Here comes Sally with a snicker and a grin. Here comes Sally with a snicker and a grin. Groundhog gravy all over her chin. Oh, groundhog. Eat the meat and you save the hide. Eat the meat and you save the hide. Best darn shoestrings ever did tie. Oh, groundhog. A little piece of cornbread sitting on a shelf. Little piece of cornbread sitting on a shelf. If you want any more, you can sing it yourself, old groundhog. Well, my old man, he never could talk straight, except for when he was drunken, and, and we and we was powerful poor, what with his inheritance and all. So one day he allowed us how he's going to take the old shotgun off the mantle, and kiss his uh, woman goodbye, and we ends would go out to hunting some schoon cans to sell at the stain tration when the next caboose come by all by itself. Paul, he went out to whistle up all the dogs, all except old Shorty. Then he whistled up old Shorty. Now Shorty, he was a purebred, half basset hound and half Georgia cur, fast as molasses and mean as milk. And then Paul whistled up old Shorty, too. And meanwhile, I walked out to the horse to saddle up my barn so as I could catch up to Pa, who hadn't left yet. I walked my tree stump up alongside old Lightning. Nobody called him that except for me, and I didn't call him that either. And then I stepped on the horse and jumped onto the tree stump facing backwards, and I yelled, Let's go home, Lightning! Oh, we, we rode out of there at a dead walk to catch up to old Pa. Pretty soon, Pa, he had all the dogs rounded up all except old Shorty. Then he rounded up old Shorty, too. We rode down a long, straight, narrow path that curved all around the woods till we come to a big old open clearing full of trees with one little cabin sitting all by itself in among twelve others just like it. By that point, I had uh, lost track of Paul, so I walked up to the cabin and uh, took off my head and I bowed my hat and I I knocked on the woman, and a door answered, and I sort of asked in a brazen, humble way if she'd seen my paw. Big feller, she says. Yup, says I. On horseback, she says. Yup, says I. With a pack of dogs, she says. Yup, says I. I ain't seen him, she hollered in a whisper, and she slammed the door in my face and invited me in. There's nothing to eat in here except for cornbread and beans and ham and fat back and poke salad and collard greens. But you're welcome to stay as long as you leave. Well, I stayed for a while, but then her bark come up and he started dogging at me. And then I remembered Pa and all the dogs, all except old Shorty. Then I remembered old Shorty, too. So I took out of there and I rode hard and fast to catch up to Pa and all the dogs. But, but then my tree stump had tripped over somebody's horse that they laid left lying around there, and he threw me straight down, face down, flat on my back, and I tore my hide and bruised my shirt. Well, so I figured I'd go see my sweetheart Sally so she could patch my hide with a thimble and thread. <laughs> She's so happy to see me, she had the door nailed shut. I went on inside, and I threw my hat on the fire, and I stirred up the bed, and we sat down right close to one another, me in one corner and her in the t'other one, and we commenced to play in the cards. And I drawed a heart, and she drawed a diamond, and then her pa come home and he drawed a club. So I figured it was time to leave. I'd rode hard and fast to catch up to old Paul out of there. Pretty soon I come to see a whole bunch of raccoons running around without their skins on, so I knew that Paul had been there. Well, I come up there and I find Pa with all the dogs and all the dogs, they took, they took trail. They found a raccoon's trail, all except old Shorty. Then old Shorty, he found that trail too. And directly all the dogs treed, all except old Shorty. 
and that old shorty treed too. Well, I looked up in that tree, and them dogs, they had treed two enormous, huge, full-grown baby possums. Well, I climbed up that tree, and climbed up to where them possums was, and and I crawled out. It was a buckeye sycamore tree. I crawled out on a sturdy dogwood limb, and them possums, they started throwing acorns at me. So I crawled into a knot hole, and I fell through the tree, and I fell down and landed on all the dogs, all except old Shorty. And then I landed on old Shorty, too. Well, them possums, they looked down, they saw me. They started laughing so hard, they fell out of the tree. So I grabbed them, and I killed them by beating their heads against my head till they's dead. Then I cut off their tails right up close behind their ears. Well, we headed on out for home. When we got home, buddy, we didn't have nothing but a hundred schoon cans, a bruised shirt, a couple of possum tails, no more stump, no tree stump, no more saddle, and all the dogs, and all except old Shorty, him and my tree stump, they never did come home after that. Little piece of cornbread sitting on a shelf. Little piece of cornbread sitting on a shelf. If you want any more, you can sing it yourself. Old Groundhog. Uh, there's the story of the Schoonkin hunt.